to you guys. Dave Malkoff, thank you for the report this morning. And look who we have with us. It is uh, Mike, who's, I'm <laughs> sorry, we got to bring in here. Uh, he's back in studio this Good morning. Gentle, gentle. Good to be <laughs> yeah, I'm sore, but, but, but no worse for wear. Very happy to have you home. It was rough. Uh, I mean, nothing that I've ever, you know, experienced before. And, uh, you know, I think different for a lot of people. And it started a conversation, obviously, across the country. It did. You know, I, I, and, I, and I'm okay with that. I mean, maybe, you know, if anything, you know, what happened with, with our crew or another crew's out there, you know, it's, it's now safety is, is paramount. I think so many of us sometimes forget that when we're out there. Maybe you get caught up in the moment. You kind of forget your situational awareness. So I think this is, um, it's good to be in the forefront, if nothing else, now. Well, certainly we have a lot to cover this morning, and uh, Mike is going to stick around for a little while. We're going to have a more in-depth conversation, and Dr. Forbes joining us, too, this morning. Yeah, boy, his analysis is pretty um, jaw-dropping. Just talked to him a little bit ago. It's crazy. Yeah. Mike, good to see you. You too. All All right, right. We'll talk more with Mike Bettis coming up in a few minutes. We'll also, of course, be tracking your stormy weather for this weekend. It all happened really quickly. Uh, you know, the reality is it happened over a course of a couple of minutes. It seemed like it was seconds, but there was that moment, especially when we were airborne and we were just weightless and floating, that, I mean, I, it, was, it was almost um, serenity, sort of. I felt like, truly felt like at that moment I, I was going to heaven. Fortunately, it was not Mike's time just yet, but that is some raw emotion from our own Mike Bettis and our Tornado Hunt team as they caught, got caught up in an EF3 tornado Friday in El Reno, Oklahoma during their coverage of an outbreak. Yeah, very harrowing experience to say the least where Mike and the crew were tossed 200 yards storm. They were in heavy chase SUV. Everyone had their seatbelts on and very luckily we have Mike with us this morning. Thank God. It is good to see you guys. Trust me, <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a tough day. Yeah, and uh, you know, for all of us here watching, obviously, a lot of concern with everyone. And you know, now that a couple of days have passed, and a lot of people are asking questions, and I think the number one question a lot of people ask are just, how did you find yourself in this spot? Um, it, it, was a, it was a difficult chase day for us. I mean, a lot of, a lot of storms ha had fired up off to the north as well. We were coming in on the north side, um, getting down toward the storm. Uh, and we, we rarely like to be on that side of the storm. It's usually the direction that the tornado is moving. There's usually a lot of hail on that side and we, we try to not get hit by big hail and then there's usually a lot of rain or a rain curtain that, that will obscure your view of the tornado and you so you don't really know what it's doing at that point um, so we always try to like to be on the, on the south side of the storm usually then it's moving away from you there's no hail there's no rain and you're in the safest place uh, to be if you're gonna you know be on that in storm spotting so I think we just ended up getting caught kind of on the north side and, and try to get south and get away from it. We weren't trying to get closer to it, we are trying to get away from it uh, and end up getting caught on the front side of the, of the tornado. And you know, we've seen pictures of the, the GPS display of all the chasers that were out there, so you weren't alone in that attempt to try and No, get I mean, there. There, were, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of storm chasers out there, a lot of storm spotters, and I think they're, you know, I mean, my opinion of it is they, they do a valuable job. I mean, there's, what they do is they give ground truth to what you know, radar is looking at, um, and they can they can show you the little nuances that are happening. You know, the quick changes that happen. But you know, there really at that point was just one road, and there was one road north south. Uh, there was no east west road. If there was an east route, I think a lot of um, chasers would have been on it. Um, just but having that situational awareness and knowing your escape route, I think, is really really important. Well, that kind of leads us into the question of you know, how do you look at this now? And obviously, it's a couple days after the fact, but have you changed your opinions at all about what you might want to do in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think there are times when you're when you're out there in the moment, and um, maybe you get caught up in the moment, and you safety's not always the first thing that comes to mind then. But I think in in having gone through that now, I think that's the first thing that's going to be in my mind. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm going to be out there and chase if I choose to do that again. My wife have, might have something to say about that. But, <laughs> Your wife uh, also chases, by uh, the way, sometimes. Right. Um, but, you know, now seeing the video, seeing what happened, having gone through that, you know, I'm going to treat it like my wife is sitting there right next to me or mm. you guys are right there next to me. What would I do the next time? Um, I, it probably would be different. And, and uh, if I'm not mistake, uh, mistaken, some of the crew that was with you was with you in Joplin as well. Yeah, so, tight uh, so we've been through this yeah. before, and we, we've seen these things. We've all done it for years now together, and they all we all trust each other. But um, I think just just being more aware next time, knowing where you are in relation to the trainer goes a long way. Well, I think we have a lot to talk about this morning, and Mike, it's good to have you back. It's and uh, Dr. Forbes. Really good is going to be here next too and Forbes was I can tell you maybe you didn't hear it with everything going on but he was looking at your location watching the radar and obviously extremely concerned because he knew where you were at 
gave that guy a big bear hug this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was good to see him, but his yeah. analysis is, is pretty incredible. All right, Mike, thank you so much. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Stay tuned. You're looking at video from one of the many storm chasers who covered Oklahoma on Friday, very active tornado day, and you can see just how close the chasers were. Their vehicle was slammed with all types of debris. They too were fortunate to walk away unhurt. Uh, you know by now our tornado hunt team was also caught up by the twister as it took a very unexpected turn. And for more on how that storm developed, we go to our expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, who's with Mike Bettis. And Dr. Forbes, the one thing that I cannot get out of my mind is when you were tracking the storm, mm -hmm. you said, Mike, the circulation's on top of you. You gotta go north, you have to get out of there. <laughs> Yeah, I was really worried for, for my buddy here, Mike. Uh, the storm was too big and too close to him. I was just praying that he would be able to get out of the way. I'm sure glad to see him here standing <laughs> good, with me today. It's good to be here with you this morning. It was a tough, it was a difficult, um, it was a difficult day because just, you know, the, the inherent er erratic nature of the tornado, I think it caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah, it really did. Here we have uh, some of the tracks of that tornado preliminarily. And this uh, tornado at El Reno had been going uh, slightly to the south of east. It hit Mike and his team right about here, and then it suddenly took an abrupt turn to the left uh, and then sort of mulled around, uh, never quite made it all the way up uh, to the Yukon area. Some of the other tornadoes went straight, Mike, so. Well, it was, it was a, one of those situations where we were, we were on the north side of the storm. Generally don't like to be there. There was a lot of hail to the north and some rain. I mean, playing Monday morning quarterback, we maybe could have gone back north, but knowing it made a left-hand turn, I mean, you know, we wanted to make the decision to go south and, you know, and like to stay south and get, and get out of all the hail and the rain and, and the general movement of the tornado. It was, um, it was a tough call. But you were where you want to be right, right ahead of the tornado with right. the problem, and, and you weren't alone. Look at all of the uh, dots here. Mm -hmm. You're just one of a couple of dozen. Uh, this is the tornado. So there were a lot of uh, chasers right there that uh, uh, in this huge tornado. You, the thing about it was where you see the vertical line there kind of right ahead, that's Highway 81. Um, there weren't a lot of road options to go east to stay ahead of it. You, see, you don't see a lot of dots over there. Those are generally dirt roads. Uh, you know, if they turn muddy, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, you can't make it down. You have to have knobby tires and, and a four-wheel drive vehicle to make it down. That, that's in, I think that's why you don't see a lot of vehicles that are farther east, but there wasn't just an option to go east. And this, and this uh, red area here is the strongest part of the tornado, which was on just on the, on the south side of it uh, and uh, was really intense. I measured 145 mile per hour. Mike, uh, your, your location was right about here, just as you were, and that's where the tornado was here, just as you were ending your live broadcast saying, we're, it's too close, we gotta go. Uh, you're, you're facing there about a mile wide tornado uh, from about a mile away from it uh, with incredibly strong winds. This is the 145 mile per hour uh, wind showing up uh, in the tornado at that time in all of mm. this green uh, right here. Uh, and then the reds are the, the, the westbound going winds up on the north side of that. So a dangerous, dangerous situation with... Yeah, uh, we, and I think we're trying to just, you know, get south of that. I think if, if we'd have had maybe another 30 seconds, I, I think we would have yeah. been past it. I think it just didn't time out for us just right. But we were certainly trying to get away from it. We weren't trying to yeah, get closer. Oh no. We were trying to get away. Yeah, trying to get away. And we have some video of Mike trying to get away. And this was not just any ordinary tornado with a single rotation in it. It had multiple funnels, multiple vortices revolving about that. You can see here, Mike, uh, and you were seeing live, there is a couple of oh, them right yeah. there. Uh, these are on the north side of the tornado. They're going initially northbound and then turning westbound as they revolve about the tornado. And you, as you know, Dr. Forbes, you've been out there with us. We have three vehicles. Uh, one's in the leads, about five or six car lengths ahead of us. And then our middle vehicle that I sit in, and then our, our trailing vehicle. Neither of those vehicles um, were, were lifted. They weren't, even, they weren't even moved. And our middle vehicle was thrown almost 200 yards. I'm, I'm wondering if we might have been hit by one of those vortices. Yeah, I think you probably were. That's my impression. Uh, we're seeing uh, another video here from, uh, from Reed Timmer that shows how very well defined, uh, just as, I, as they were going over you, that these multiple vortices got. And they have winds that are 50 to 100 miles per hour faster than in the parent tornado. They really add, uh, add the wind speed. I guess it would make sense. Which uh, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So the places that get hit by those, those are the, that explains why your vehicle would have been hit, uh, the others hit harder, uh, others may not have been. It's why in some residential areas, one house will be demolished and another across the street is not. Uh, 
Glad to have Mike Bettis <laughs> with us here today. It's good to be um, back. <laughs> and uh, stay safe, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you.